Hello, and welcome to Retro Set Repair and the second of our Easy Fix videos. This is the series where I buy broken retro tech or electronic games off eBay and repair them with only limited skills and with no special tools. I have something very exciting for our repair today, so without any further hesitation, let's get started. So we're going to take a look what's in this box. I have so much stuff for the channel. I've been spending and spending and spending on eBay. And it's about time that I open some of this stuff up and we'll see what we have inside. Can you tell what it is yet? Yep. You've guessed it. It's an Astro Shooter Pinball. I'm going to take a quick look inside of it. Not inside of the game, not yet at least, not till we repair it, but inside of the box. Here is the box. There are a few different versions of this. And uh, let's see what we have in here. There we are. It's a little smaller than I expected, actually. I didn't realize it was only a little bit larger than the traditional kind of Tomy pinball. It's got some wear on it, and it didn't come out like this on the pictures does have some wear and some damage. It has uh, two feet, that's how the foot should be, how the leg should be for it. And then we have another one, which is actually a block of wood. It's quite nicely made, it fits quite well, uh, but it's obviously not original. And then we have the power supply as well. And in terms of condition, uh, one flipper works, the other flipper works, but this flipper up here does not work. Um, looking around at the device, you know, that's where our legs go underneath. And under here we have a volume control, which just basically, I think, increases or decreases the cover over the speaker there. And uh, that's about it. So uh, we'll pop it in a better orientation and we'll have a quick play with it and we'll see how it plays. And then we'll get inside and see if we can do anything with this flipper. Switch it on here. Nothing much seems to happen. Let's uh, reset the counter here to give us five balls in play. And uh, obviously we have a flashing light here. And I think to start play, we reset with this. There we go. So my thoughts initially are that perhaps some of these bumpers are not as sensitive as I would like them to be. Particularly this one seems a little slow to react. You can see how it wasn't triggered at all there. So I feel like this is maybe a bit slow to react. The other features seem to be working okay with the exception of our broken flipper here. Okay, so some things I'd like to look at are maybe making these bumpers here a little bit more reactive and um, fixing this flipper. It looks like a part of it is broken off and maybe is wedged underneath it there, but gluing those two together might be tricky. We'll see, we'll see, maybe it connects differently. I'm hoping so, because uh, it would be nice to get that working. Uh, everything else seems to work okay. Like I say, just a bit of a slow reaction and that broken flipper. There's some scratches on the play area, which we might try and clean up too. But everything else, the scoreboard and everything seems to work as you would expect. These are just mechanical, you just set those by hand. So the high score really is uh, not that important. This resets, the gameplay works, the sound effects seem to work nicely. You know, generally it's gonna be pretty good. I'm interested in seeing what it's like when we get inside it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this part comes off. I think it just needs a firm hand and out it comes. That works fine. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now and we'll take a look at the rest of it. I don't know how you get in here. Looks like there are two, three screws in the top. Let's disconnect the power. That seems to work fine. So we'll get that out of the way and we'll take these screws out here and see if we can get inside. All right, that piece just lifts off. Our electronics sounder mechanism under here. I think this is the reset for the play. Look at the play area. Okay, good. The play area just seems to lift off too. There we are. Just a question of the angle, I think. All right, so now we have an opportunity to look at this flipper. And indeed, it looks like it has broken. So maybe that goes in there. Maybe we can super glue that piece back in. That would be my hope. And that just sits then on this mechanism, which presumably turns when this turns. Okay, so this piece turns. So let's see if we can get the play area out. 
And I think we need to take the flippers off. I feel like it's caught on something. I can't quite figure out what. Oh, there's a wire. It's, oh, it's kind of grounded or connected somehow. This must be um, this must be a power supply that like they're using the metal as a the metal of the play area is some kind of supply on here so we might need to unsolder this wire that's going to be interesting i'm guessing this would sink a lot of heat so we probably need to unsolder it from this end to take it out that's a surprise because actually i'd not got my soldering iron ready for this but i'm thinking i might need to unsolder that so we can get this play area out of play so uh, we'll pop the soldering iron on we'll go ahead and do that now pause the camera while i set it up and then we'll come back and See if we can get this out. All right, so our soldering iron's warmed up now. We're just gonna go ahead and take this wire off. Hopefully we can then free off the uh, play area here. The wire's kind of tucked in amongst these transistors. Careful not to melt the plastics as I'm trying to free this off. The blue wires come away and then the black one. Excellent. So hopefully now we should be able to get this play area out. and expose the mechanism within. Well, this is very interesting. Again, a big mechanical component. We see this is very much like the atomic pinball was, and I have no reason at all to understand why these flippers are not as sensitive as we would hope. Interestingly, we have the circuit here, which has a chip of some description on it, which presumably is providing the sound effects. And there's another board down here. I'm not quite sure what that's doing. Maybe that's a little amplifier board or something. Um, I'm not sure what that is. It looks like though the electronics or the bulk of the electronics are up here with that one chip. And uh, I'll see if I can read the number off that chip for you. 8931CFA microchip. Really not gonna mess too much with this because it doesn't really need too much repair. The flipper mechanism is good. It's just the flipper that's broken. So probably rather than disassemble too much of this, I'm just gonna lubricate some of it with a plastic safe lubricant. And then um, we'll leave that and we'll just concentrate on fixing this flipper, assemble it, clean it, and we should be good to go. Okay, so here we have our flipper. And the first thing that we're going to do, just dry fit these together to make sure that they go together okay and we know where they are going to go. And in fact, uh, they do position quite nicely. I'm gonna just put some super glue on there to hold that in place at first. And then I'm probably gonna use some other type of adhesive or something to hold it together too. Yeah, but we'll start with the super glue I think I'll go on to um, I think I'll go on to this piece, the larger piece here. It's quite a big blob of super glue already, more than I had really wanted to apply. This is very runny super glue, and it's gone all over this piece. Well, at least we know we've got the area of interest. And my thumb. Okay, so that's in there now. We'll hold it for a few seconds, and then we're going to leave the whole thing to dry. All right, so we're back. It's been a little while and our super glue is all set and dried up and actually it does feel pretty sturdy, but I just can't help feeling that in play, there's going to be a lot of force on this little pin. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some epoxy. This is a, uh, this is from the pound store, the dollar store, pound store. So it's not the very best that you can buy, but I'm hoping that it's going to do the job. I'm going to mix this up here, following the instructions, and then I'm going to apply some of that to the back of our uh, flipper here. So it's two parts, squeeze them out, hopefully in roughly equal measure. Mix the two halves together. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply it in the back of our flipper here. Very good. So we'll leave that to set. And what I tend to do is I'll keep that there so I can get a sense for when this one has set. And I'm going to take some kitchen roll here and I'm going to clean off the bits that have got on the plastic spindle because that needs to go into the mechanism. So while we're waiting for our glue to set, I'm going to come in now with this uh, silicon plastic safe lubricant and I'm just going to lubricate more or less everything that I can find here. Even those things that move fairly freely, I'm going to get a quick squirt of this. So that done, 
The play area is a little grimy, so I'm just gonna give that a quick spray over with some furniture polish, and then we'll reassemble the game. And then we'll go ahead and solder our wire back into place here. So now let's take a look at our restored flipper. So we have our super glue outside, we have our epoxy inside, and that has now set pretty solidly. Yeah, I'm relatively pleased with that. So uh, we're gonna reassemble that into the game, and we're gonna hope that that's adequate. Okay, great. Now I set that aside for a minute while we put a little bit of attention into the plastic on the top. We're gonna to get this cleaned up initially with some window cleaner, uh, front and back, and then uh, hopefully you know, with maybe a little bit of polish or something like that, just to give it a little bit more shine than it has right now. And we've also got an insect in it at the moment, which we'll get rid of too. Okay, so we've cleaned that up. Now it's a not quite as thorough polish as I would perhaps ordinarily give it if I wasn't so time crunch, but you know what? It's still in nice shape and I can always do it again at some point in the future. I decide I want to do that. Okay, so finally, let's get this reassembled now. So the next thing that we're going to look at is these feet. So we have the one foot, the original foot, in quite nice condition, needs a bit of a clean maybe, but then uh, we have our substitute foot, which unfortunately is wood. And in fact, you have done a really nice job of this. It's a shame I don't have two of these. I think that would have been nice just to have two the same, but I tried a little bit of Sharpie on there to make it look black, or permanent marker as I would call it. And I thought maybe I'd try putting some tape around it to make it look a bit more plasticky, so it's a better match to the one that's there. So let's see if that works. Okay, so here is our finished foot. Uh, obviously not factory, uh, but I think more in keeping with the game. Uh, black finish now, I'm happy with that. I think it looks better than it did before. Here's our Astro Shooter Pinball, now with its uh, wooden foot, but I think more in keeping than it would have been had it been just in the wood colour. Okay, well we have everything back together. It's time for one last look at our now finished Astro Shooter Pinball. We have the working flippers. We tidied up a little bit, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but importantly is it works now, and the flipper here works just as it should. So we can go ahead and play the game. Well, that just about wraps it up for our Astro Shooter Pinball for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that if you have, you'll consider hitting subscribe. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. Hi, that's what's inside here. That could be a problem. Just oh, the joystick works as it should. Great. Grandstand scramble, wonderful, looking forward to fixing that.